Like that, don't you? Uh, all right. Welcome to episode three, day three of practice. It's easy for us, okay. right? Piece of cake. The Fistman Central Roundtable from Chicago Fire Brew Pub and Tap House. Rowdy crowd in an IV. Oh, yeah. This Rowdy court, crowd. Stacked up like cordwood up in here. Yeah. So it's going to be fun, guys. Your host, Mr. Fat Cat Newton. Hey there, Fisher World What's Shaking, Fat Guy Newton coming at you with that loud music in my ear. I got Jesse Millsap to my right, I got Greg Mansfield to my left. These dudes are the ones that I've been watching. We saw what he did at Ufala. Greg's man, it's, it's his time to shine any day now. Talking to him, getting into something real quick. Uh, you said it was a little warm out there today. It was warm. Are we already we going first with that? Yeah, yeah we're going. With that. Yeah, I want to know who we're dealing with right now. How so, hot was it out there? Have you seen Have you seen Space Jam? Space Jam the movie? Yeah, that's one of the best movies ever, brother. You got who Bill Murray seen? in there. Oh yeah. Sorry. You've been in Florida for a while. I figure we conjure a little Bill Murray. <laughs> oh no! Inside, I got the cure for the Dude, Florida uh, sun. So many times I wanted this today when I was out there on the water. Oh, I took man. a couple nice. of nights. No, <laughs> You know, passing out in there. I had a couple guys come by, look at me, and go. And I said, probably the man to you. They probably wish they had one, too. I guess we didn't really check this. Can we get it down in here? Uh, we did. Yeah. Dude, that Florida Sun's serious, man. Nah, so, I've been down here for three weeks, and let's that talk umbrella about is coming handy. So, How, How's it been going since you've been down here, brother? Uh, it's been fun. And, you know, just uh, bass around Florida. I've had a good buddy that lives down here, and he's he's always told me May and June is one of the best times to fish in Florida, and we're never here. And so just to get to go around to some random lakes and really see what this state has to offer, it's been spectacular. And, um, you know, uh, also it was nice to get acclimated to the heat. Jesse, I don't know when you got down here, but uh, I was already, well, the first day of practice, it didn't even phase me anymore. So. Oh, really? I got here Saturday, and it, it's hot. Bring up my a little it's bit. Of, Jesse, come in a little bit for me. It's hot. Oh, yeah. So, you're yeah, it's, you're it's, hot. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, easy, <laughs> easy. <laughs> Dude, give us a little bit of background on yourself, Greg. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I'm from Minnesota originally. I've spent about half my life living in Kansas, half in Minnesota. Uh, from the Midwest, um, you know, uh, really had a business career prior to fishing. Really started fishing about eight years ago. And some of the boys from Minnesota, uh, you know, kind of Austin, Seth, Josh Douglas, Joel, a bunch of guys from up there adopted me a little bit when we first got going. And nice. Kind of slowly been bringing me up to speed. I've kind of been learning on the fly. Started doing the opens right away, getting my butt whipped, and uh, really enjoyed just uh, bassing around the last eight years, learning on the fly. And I've spent a, ten thousand hours on the water, and uh, you know, learning and, and just love bassing. And you're all, like, especially these days, especially you're keeping track of all that. You're you're documenting like your journey through the whole situation with your YouTube channel and stuff, right? Yeah, I think uh, some of us, you know, Fat Cat, you've let some people know about this. Uh, some of us were a little slow to the YouTube game um, yeah. <laughs> when it first came Me. out. We're like, YouTube? Like, what do we need that for? But, no, as I've gotten more serious on the business side of fishing, I think, you know, in order to do anything you can with social media to to show sponsors and, and, and present digital social media, a lot like what the MPFL is doing right. with digital, not TV, digital, through YouTube and other platforms like that. I think that's the way things are going. And, uh, you know, I've enjoyed, you know, if, more, if not more than anything else, I've got my family here with me. To be able to look back, I, mean, I remember fishing with my grandpa when I was eight years old, catching walleye at Minnesota. To have a video of that back in the day, oh, can wow. you imagine? Dude, you know? and so could imagine. To be able to document this stuff now and then to do some stuff with the kids and do that now, I think it's going to be, if, if I get nothing else out of it, just to have the, the digital record of it for when yeah. my kids get older, I think it'll be a lot of fun. So, Right on, brother. Jesse, old yeah. Jesse Millsap. Mr. Uh, Mr. You follow Mr. Uh, bed fishing and you follow the muddy, dirty, nasty fish just sitting there, just cold, straight jamming steel. Uh, what do you think? What's your history of Florida? I, this is only my third tournament here at Florida. I fished Okeechobee once in the Strand Series, and then I fished a couples tournament at Kissimmee. So this is only my third time ever being in Florida fishing. Is that right? Well, how's practice going so far? I, I've had three decent days. I mean, and, you know, I love the lakes. I mean, I've been to four different lakes and uh, explored explored a lot of the water and had had some decent practice. So. Good deal. Now, what exactly is decent practice? Are you are you flipping them in the boat? Or are you just looking at them? Like, what, what, explain it. What, what's a decent practice? I go on bots. I okay. mean, you know, I, I'll catch the first couple, and, I, and I've had some, some, you know, I'm averaging 12 to 15 bots a day. Okay. So, you know, sometimes a little more. But, uh, you know, a lot of the fish are, they're, you know, they're, they're in different 
a lot of different areas, so you don't know what size. I mean, I'm, I know the difference about when you're covering up your hook, so some of them just a little different. Well, listen, I, we had a guy on last night, Jeff Fitz, and um, I kind of, I don't know, I didn't really call him a liar, but he said he, uh, he, he saw one on a bed. He knows where one's on a bed, and I know you like some bed fishing. You think he's uh, – that, that heat's getting to him, or you think there's any bed fish out there? i seen some tilapia on bed. I oh. haven't seen no bass on bed. There's a lot of tilapia. I you mean, see any I've, bass I've on bed, Greg? I have uh, not seen a bass on bed, but I do. I know they've got like a nine-month spawning period down here, so I'm sure there's at least one out there yeah, somewhere. But I'm sure, but I mean, um, I, it, it, bed fish is not going to win this tournament, I can tell you that. Oh, yeah, that, man, no yeah. doubt about that. Hey, we're going to get into this, but I want to start with something because while we were doing a little pregame and talking, you touched on something about – the pressure, especially like with Griffin and, and fish relocation and stuff, I thought it was very interesting because for you folks at home, no Harris chain of lakes. So it's multiple lakes. You can lock through two different locks that the guys will be using. There are other locks, but they'll just be using the two locks, and they go from lake to lake to lake. And kind of go into what you were telling me about the fellow you talked to and the stocking of the lakes. Yeah, so I was in Griffin today, and I just happened to pull in a canal and trying to get in the shade because it was so hot, you know, and I was taking some lunch, eating some lunch, and the guy was like, you know, you guys are fishing behind five or six big tournaments. I think he said the Big Bass Tour had 800 entries here. You know, I don't know when it was, but 800 entries in the Big Bass Tour here. So um, he was talking about how they had to restock Griffin because a lot of the fish were coming out of Griffin going – being weighed in and, and Eustace and Lake Eustace and uh, Lake Harris so that fish are getting transported over, so they're having to restock that lake to like keep you it said, up. You said yeah, those fish ain't locking back through. They're not going back through the canal and locking back through. I mean, right. so they're having, to, they're having to restock the program, which, you know, you, you can tell. I mean, there's, there's, there's fish in every lake. So. You lock through it all? You've been, you've been running around bebopping and flip-flopping? Have you checked all the lakes, or you just got a few of them under your belt or what? Yeah. You've been here for three weeks. You, you know, ought to know the thing back of your hand. Hey, if I've been on this lake for three weeks, this oh, guy Brad's going to have a problem. With <laughs> that was bait. That was I bait. Just, <laughs> I just snuck out at night out here, Brad. Just at night. No one saw me out here. Don't worry. No, I don't worry too much. But no. Um, I probably have 100 days on this body of water, um, and none of it really helped me at all because it's just such a different lake after they've sprayed everything. Um, you know, when we're here, usually in the spring, they're just starting their spraying process. And now they're completed with their spraying process. And usually, so everything that we're doing in the spring is just completely different, and it repositions these fish and sets them up. So, you know, having all that experience out here only helped me in one way. It was that I was able to look at most of the lake because I wasn't too concerned about just getting to know, like, well, what's Griffin look like? What's, you know, what's Harris look like? Like, I kind of know areas, and so you're comfortable everywhere you go. So I was just able to cover a lot of water. And, you know, that, that was probably, you know, but, yeah, I've looked at every square inch of, of all the lakes to kind of get a feel of what's going on. I, you know, I'm one of those guys, if I got it in my head, like, well, I wonder what's going on in Griffin, you know, um, right. that'll haunt me the whole tournament. And so just to kind of lay eyes on everything and, and have that out of my head before practice allows me to really, you know, I get a little hyper, I get a little wound up. And so to get, to be able to focus in on what I'm doing and feel like I'm doing the right thing really matters for, for helping me fish better. Um, you know, later in my careers, I've gotten better. I think it really helps a lot just knowing what's going on in most of the body of water. Right on. And Do seeing you- it. Do you think you know enough of what's going on in the body of water to, to win this thing? Uh, you know, you, every year if you fish all year long and you fish tournaments all year, even the best guys in the world maybe get one or two opportunities <laughs> to win every year. So to say something like that would mean a lot. Absolutely. You know, you know, you know what I mean? Just like you just yes. To say you're going to have a chance to win, you know, it has to be something pretty special. Um, I feel like this would be one of those ones I could see a path to victory. Right, I see how it could play out to where I, if things went right, I could win. Um, but I definitely am not leaving this you know, you, nice establishment well, this I, evening I, going, hey, I'm going to go win a trophy What do you think you'll need week. to win? That's a good question. Thank you. <laughs> He's like, that's what I do. <laughs> that's what I do. So I'll see. curious what Jesse thinks, but there'll be somebody. In, in, all my experience in Florida, 10 to 12 pounds a day gets a check no matter what. I don't yes. care what we're doing. And these Absolutely. are all post-spawn fish, so these are not even really big pre-spawn female mm-hmm. giant bass, right? Uh, an eight-pounder is a six-and-a-half right now, um, or seven. Um, you know, so there'll be some big bags. There's always some real top-heavy weights. But 10 to 12 is going to get a check, and I would think to win you probably need 55, 60, uh, oh. 55. Or, uh, Man. I don't mm. – Heartbreak. Okay, well, so what, what Jesse, no, yeah. I'm just kidding. No, I think it's just if you look at the history of, of fishing, it's just hard to put three big bags together. Well, anywhere I, we go. Story, I, I agree with that. Yes. Yeah, no, you're, you're 
But out of all places, are we in a place where that can happen? If the, I mean, you'd have. I mean, if if all the chips fell right, right, and you just put yourself in the right position all three days, you could have some of the biggest. Same question, different way. If a guy catches 70, 72, is he going to blow it away? Like yes. no, like second place will not even be, not like, even be. We'll be twenty pounds ahead of everybody else. Absolutely. Yeah. Whoa, man. Oh, what do you think? Like, what do you think it would take to win, Jesse? Oh, at 55 to 60. Really? Yes. And what do you I mean, think our big bag will be? I think you're going to see a, a low 20s bag, a low okay. to mid 20s bag. I think you're going to see that just because the So quality, no one will break 25, like no, low to mid 20s, so no one is going to bring in a 25-pound plus. He who catches two to three big fish a, a day is, will blow it out. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. We'll so big, big fish for the tournament is 615. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Big fish for the year. It's 6.15. Will we break that this week? Yes. Yes. Uh, I mean, what do you think, Greg? Florida. You're tuned out. Where, where, some, well, I was thinking about the, the big bag again. Again, I got a good buddy that lives down in Lakeland. Um, and, you know, I've met him in the open six years ago, and he's always told me this time of year. So you know, he, he constantly tells me this is the time of year you can see a 30-pound bag. So it wouldn't surprise me to see one. Right. I, ha- I mean, I don't Fingers even know crossed, what I'm on. Fingers crossed, bro. <laughs> I do think we can see one just because – you know, the fish are set up super specific on what they're wanting to do. And so if somebody does land on the right group, you know, you don't have this weird cold front that's going to come through. And, like, every time I've been here, it's like, hey, tournament time. It's 10 degrees outside, and the bass aren't biting again. So now that we have – and it looks like the weather is going to be very stable. It's going to be kind of overcast, a little bit of sun, and then afternoon thunderstorms and a low wind out of the southeast all three days of the tournament. So barrel changes, right? Like, you're going to see that fluctuation in barrel. Like, you know, you, you know it, I wouldn't – it's, I'm certainly not going to be back at the camera shocked if somebody catches 30 pounds. Right so around. it can happen here. I don't think somebody's going to do it three days in a row. It, it would take them, but it would be awesome if it did, right? That would be phenomenal. What do you think a big fish will be? What, what can we see as far as a big fish goes? You know, this place has them. Again, they're not. They're pre-spawn, you know, fat. You know, nine-something nine, nine something would, would be what I would think. Does anybody know what the major league the last year the last week there was a major league fishing event here? What was the big fish uh, weight there? I think it was nine two or was something. Was it nine? It was yeah, nine four, four nine two. two. Somewhere in that I'll range. I'll just say then. eight seven, but just because it's eight yeah. seven. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw so I'm gonna put you two oh. on blast right now. So Ooh, in your face. I, I know you haven't seen it because it just aired. So Luke had our guest host. Do you know who the guest host? Because Dudley's BPT and H. Yeah, like you know, D- Dudley just dumped us like a freaking <laughs> oh, a bad date. And so we so called in Bradley Hallman. He's watching Hallman. right now. Guaranteed yeah. Dudley's Guarantee watching. Guarantee you. So, Dudley. <laughs> Bradley Hallman's going to be here. Do you know Bradley Hallman, who I have a lot of respect for as far as the guy knows his stuff. He's very deliberate. Do you know what his prediction was for this tournament? I'd be curious to know. You, you guys don't know, though, because you probably didn't see it. 78 pounds. He said 25 a day, no doubt. You know who his second guest was on his podcast today? This guy named Bobby Lane. You, heard you of may him? have heard of her. I don't know. Hey, what's up, Bobby? So right, he was in the same. He was in the same vein. I think that's part of the beauty of this, right? We don't know. We're gonna find out Thursday. I think the thing that's hurt the most is Memorial Day traffic. Yeah. If we wouldn't have had the Memorial Day traffic, I don't know what it is for these people around here. They don't ride in the middle of the lake. <laughs> that is, we saw that all <laughs> my, all, since I've been I, here, He's seen bro. it coming. I was like, hey, man, watch this. <laughs> Dude, what's, what's, the bu- what's the buffer, 10 feet? Uh, 10 oh feet God. off the bank. It don't matter where you go. You can be sitting on fishing some hydrilla out in the middle, and it does not Hydrilla? Matter. Hold yeah. on a second now. <laughs> you can be you found hydrilla some- out there? <laughs> oh, yeah, there's hydrilla. <laughs> what? But, Come on. And, but anyway, you I can thought- be sitting there, and, and it's like, it's like, the Daytona 500. Man. They're going to find you. It doesn't matter where you're at, what you're doing. And there's going to be fish caught in places in this tournament that did not produce in practice because of those reasons. Oh. I was going to say, does that help or hurt it? Like, those fish are fresh, right? They haven't been messed with because well, no, you couldn't even get on for, for three days. <laughs> no, and those I mean, canals have been jammed up the whole oh, time, it's, right? It's gonna, it, they're going to be fish that you're going to see come in that, that – didn't get caught in practice and because they're sitting there and they don't want to, you know, they can't uh, we they had, even wait. The fishing was better today, and we had all that wind, weird changes, plus all the traffic out there that kind of screwed things up, and I think it'll set up better here in the tournament comes yeah. along. We got that you know, kind of rainy weather coming in and and stable. It's not this, it's stable rainy weather. It's going to be the same every day. And every anywhere in this time, of the, between now and wintertime, mm-hmm. if you can get the same weather for three, four, five, six days in a row, it'll set the fish up. Mm-hmm. 
you know, it should be a lot of fun. So the only thing, figure the out only thing if it's cloudy, if, it's, if it is overcast, it'll scatter the fish. That's oh, the yeah. only thing that's going to scatter them. Which will bring more of the field into play, right? I mean, that, that yeah. really, that opens the door for a guy just to. I want to know how it's going to be one because I, there's so many different ways you can fish the Harris Chain Lakes, whether you want to fish offshore, whether you're shell beds. Uh, you know, brush piles, your grass, whether you're focused on hydrilla, whether you're focused on eel, whether you're focused on the water behind the grass. Like, what is it good? the winning pattern? Will it be a mix of all? Can somebody win it offshore? Will it be one shallow? What do you think, Greg? Because you see, you got over 100 days here. What? I think it's going to be one shallow, um, maybe with a little offshore mixed in. Uh, I hope it's a mixture because that's what I plan on doing. Okay, but, um, okay. You know, it, uh, I think somebody up shallow here can run into it a big bag several days in a row i think that's how you can get yeah. you know um just looking at what's been going on out here what do you think jesse i think it's gonna be a mixture mixture it, yeah, yeah i hope so because <laughs> what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a guy pull up in a stretch and he's gonna catch 20 pound 25 pound in a day and he's gonna think that stretch is gonna reload and it's not nah, no nope, it's not gonna happen they and move they, uh, wolf packs and they kind of yeah you know they i mean i just think i think you're gonna have to do both how big of a role will electronics play in this tournament because I know I was ta- I've talked to uh, some guys weren't even de- tuning in with their electronics. We had guys with electronic issues or whatever, but we got some guys that are just up in the grass, not even worried about those electronics. Do you think that those electronics, the forward face to sonar, all that good stuff? Hey, there's th- today's technology. Somebody's always going to use it. There's some guys out there. That's what they do. They're going to look at their screen and they're going to go catch them. I mean, because you're going to see them swimming out in front. Is of that going to do what you're doing? No, no. <laughs> I already knew the answer to that. I just wanted to ask. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but it sounds like you will be, Greg, right? Cause you're yeah, gonna that's be- how I, I mean, I, I'm, I love love offshore fishing and offshore season and using the using the screens. Like I said, I had an umbrella for crying out loud. Yeah, right. I've yeah. been doing for three you, days. But, I hear you. So it'll play one way or the other. It'll, it'll either play because it's a way some big fish will get caught or it'll play because somebody like me spent too much time looking at them and should have right. just been up casting them, winding up in the shoreline. Like uh, like I know you can get some big bites out here right Talking now. about looking at stuff and everything, and you brought it up a second ago with BPT being here a couple weeks ago, you watching that coverage, did that – did you use that as homework or to, to help you move come here? Like, did you learn anything from that? Have you tried anything you picked up off of watching that coverage? Because in all honesty, I was here in Florida and fishing, and I didn't watch much okay. because the fishing was so good that I got to where I was like, and it's also 100 degrees outside every day when you're in the boat. It's hard to be like, to think, let alone pull out your phone and be looking at something and trying to fish uh, when you're catching, you know, a bunch of fish. It, you know, I just – was enjoying the moment, having fun. Occasionally, I'd tune in and, and, and read a little bit, kind of see where things were going. Almost sometimes more just to study on if there was a, a place that was getting too beat up because I knew Memorial Day weekend was coming up, and I was like, man, if some if there's just an obvious, like if everybody goes to Griffin and 50 people whack him in Griffin, I'm just not even going to go there because it's going to get too too beat up. Right. So that's the only way I used it was okay. a, just a little bit of a tool. And things always cha- they change every week. and Especially this time of year, yeah. right, because we're still like – did you – what do you use – how did you get ready to come down here? Like, what do you do? I mean, not – yeah, I watched it because I've only been to Florida three times. Right. So, I was like, you know, so that – Glued? So, so you're <laughs> – no, I wasn't glued. I'll, I'll tell you. I mean, but I, I just – what Greg did is like, I'm going to go and say it's south south shore of Harris. I mean, they, they commented on it every yeah. day. I don't fish in a crowd. I don't like a crowd. Right. So, I, that's not me. I'm going to try to go find my own thing. And you can take that information and go to other lakes or go to something and try to duplicate that. Now, that's kind of hard to do, but, I mean, you can do that. But, um, you know, it's it's just it's some people's game, I'm, and I'm sure, you know, some people's going to catch them that way, but I don't know. Will you be fishing the same way you were at Wright Patman when I saw you? No. 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 Can you elaborate a little bit without giving your juice up? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, once again, I knew the I'll answer, be, but I had hey, to ask. I will tell you this. I had a fellow competitor ask me how practice went and, you know, if I was dialed in on anything in particular. And my answer to him was, you can catch them. You can catch a fish here on ever, anything you want to throw. Right. I'll oh. tell you this. Okay, well, let I me mean, ask you this. So you weren't one of the – did you stop and buy all your devil's horse, all your devil horses and all your speed worms? Like, being that's the Florida stuff? You I mean, know what I'm saying? Like, that's – You can – I mean – I think the first day I was here, I think I counted it was nine different baits I caught a fish on. I got okay. bit on. So, I mean, it's like, you know, and, and it's it's just, you know, you got to fish your strength, and everybody has their strength. Like Greg was talking about, his strength is he's he loves his electronics. So, I mean, you know, and then, hey, more power to you. Right on. I mean, but I grew up shallow water fishing. I've, I've learned to fish deep. 
you know, doing the things that they do. But, I mean, I, I still, you know. Are you down here throwing Harris chain lures? You down here throwing Florida lures? Um, you know, I think a lot of that's a little bit more spring-reliant um, for some of the specific stuff. Um, you know, when you really have them targeted around the spawn is where a lot of those, you know, like the devil's horse is a spawning bait. Um, you know, you're catching those fish on beds, and they're coming up thinking a needlefish is coming over the top of it, and they get irritated, and they come up and crush it. So, you know, you, I'm sure you can catch them on those things still, too. Um, you know, as much time as I spent graphing, I'm not sure what I'm going to catch them on, which is a little bit scary and a little bit good at the same time. It's how some of my best tournaments have happened, but... Uh, I don't think you need a specific Florida lure right now to catch a bass. You just need to get around them and put one in front of it, um, and they're biting. So, yeah. so uh, an interesting question here, guys, is if you notice a theme about the MPFL so far this year, take you fall out of it. I went, we went there because you fall as you fall. I had a lot of history there. I know the place. But you look at everything that's happening in front of you, right, Patman, this one, and then what's coming. You – how much do you believe in the fact that the guy who wins AOI this year is going to truly earn it? Because there's minus MLF, right? Like, we're not on the backs. Like, you got to go fish. You got to learn on your own and do your own thing. We feel like as the league that that's going to force the cream to rise to the top. The guy who can really fish more so than any other time this year will be a true, like, champion. Not to take anything away from the future ones, but that's what we did, right? So, right, Patman? The guy who won Wright Patman and what happened there and the way that all went down, you guys were on your own there. There wasn't a bunch of information to go get. You had to go practice, fish, and win, right? Same thing here in the summer. So how much do you believe in the fact that you've got to go earn it? And just like you're saying, like, man, there's not a whole lot of summertime stuff here. You know what I mean? Like, how much do you believe in the fact that that's a true statement? True oh, or false? True. If you win AOI on this, because you're fishing all different seasons, you're fishing spring, summer, fall, and even, you know, almost into winter. So, I mean, you, you better be versatile. You better be versatile to win this thing. Yeah, I think, there, um, you know, being that I like offshore fishing, I, I kind of looked at the schedule and be like, what? I signed up for the MPFL, and it's <laughs> shallow everywhere we go, shallow fishing. Like, well, at least it'll force me to – make myself make a cast that's uh, some target i can see with my eyes right it is a very shallow water driven year and there's there's gonna be no doubt about it when you look back um at ufala you know they they if i believe this is right they lowered the dam down and killed most of the grass in there and we weren't so we had to completely relearn that body of water when we got there i remember being on the water going like about a half hour into practice. After watching like, your video and I seen you drop shot and I'm like, for real? You know, <laughs> like you follow you were drop shotting? And I thought they were going. We thought they were going away from us to go spawn, and because they were dropping that water level, they stayed. And that's how if I had committed more to that, yes. it's the only tournament. If I'd have just committed to offshore, I probably would have had a chance to win it. Instead, I'm up there. Dud Dudley's watching me with a spinning rod catching spawning fish, and I'm going, "Well, this is cool, but they're not coming." <laughs> you know, so no, they Brad, were coming. <laughs> to, to answer your question, Brad, uh, I think shallow water this year. Is, is a dominating factor in the MPFL. So if you're a shallow water fisherman, you have a little advantage over somebody like myself. But you're really going to have to earn it because, you know, like you fall, uh, there was no information once they killed the grass because they had to lower the dam, lower it down to fix, uh, was it to fix the dam? Um, you know, so if you look at the rest of the year too, there's just, it's always going to kind of be a learning experience. And one of the reasons, you know, I, I compete at tournament bass fishing for me personally is to learn and to become a better angler. And, this year, I feel like at the end of the MPFL, regardless of how I finish, regardless of what happens, I'm going to have met some great people and had a lot of fun, and I'm going to have learned, again, how to be a more versatile angler and do that stuff, and, and I love the schedule that we put together for that this year. What do you see next year? Well, let me ask you this. We, championship, the championship has not been announced yet, right, Greg? No. Now, if it is announced, where would you be the most excited? Ooh. I'll answer this one. If I'm in it, Wherever we're going. Oh. <laughs> Good answer. All right. That's just I'm dead serious, yeah. too. Wherever we're going, I'll be excited to try and figure out. I let, fall fishing's tough almost anywhere that we go, but I kind of it. I kind of like fall fishing after last year. You know, with the COVID thing last year, we had to fish a lot of tournaments in the fall. I learned a lot. I learned to like fall fishing, even though it's tough. Um, and so wherever we go, if I can, you know, it's only been two tournaments, and we got a lot of fishing left. So if I can, me, you know, find a way to make that championship – I'll be excited this fall to go fishing. So. Okay, that's all right. That's easy answer. What about you, man? Where do you want a championship to be at? Uh, I don't know what's going to be in the winter time. I think it's in what November. I mean, we're looking at winter time. It's, it's we're on out of fall in the winter. So Mexico, 
<laughs> Lake Lanier would be great. Oh. <laughs> Big mm. spotted bass. Oh, my. In the wintertime. What kind of history you got on Lanier? No, I live there. Oh, that, can I change no my answer to Lake Lanier? <laughs> that, yeah. Both of y'all, yeah. Hey, you just don't know what. That's the man to talk to right there. Lake Lanier has, I mean. <laughs> I, I, That's my favorite lake in the country. It's what I've ever been Can anybody win it here with a spinning rod? Hmm? Like you could at Lanier, could you win it here with a spinning rod? Not win it, no. No? I don't think so. What's it going to – where are you at in points right now, Greg? Uh, give or take 15th. So I don't. Okay. Give or take 15th, right? right it might okay. be 14. And Jesse, 16th. how about you? Seventh. You're seventh in points. Yeah. What do you think? What do you need a day to stay up in that top 15? Like, what do you want? We all want to win, but like, what? Your main goal is at 11 and 12. Is that what you said earlier? Uh, anywhere around 11 to 12 pounds is going to get a check. That's what I'm fighting for. Every one of these tournaments is a points race. You know, if you've got to. If you can stay around a check five of the six events, you'll probably make the championship. So I think 35 pounds is. We get a check? Yep. 30, 33 to 35, we'll get a check. Yep. Man. Why Every, so look at the history of Florida. There's a thousand one pounders that live here, and then there's a 10 pounder. And then there's a thousand other one pounders, and then there's an eight pounder. And so, you know, the Florida 12 pound limit is one seven pounder and three pound and a half, or four pound and a half. It hurts my feelings here. Hey, not to be be argumentative, but I'll throw this back at you real quick. Come on. I I feel like that's a very accurate statement for the predominant tournaments in January and February because you get (laughs) cold front, knock him back, one guy catches him. I just think it's I, honestly, I think it's going to be different here because the fit, the stabilization of the fishery, and I think you are going to be able to repeat your bags. Now, not the thirties, but you go out and catch fifteen. I think if you catch fifteen on day one, I think there's a high chance you're going to go out and be able to re, re, repeat that over three days because of stability. Now, I'm sitting back here, bro. Like I'm not out there with you guys, but and I. And I think about Wright Patman, and I think about don't, what. Don't one. bring up Wright Patman. That's not allowed. <laughs> yeah, that will never my, happen my, again. After just, my second day, can we just forget that? The history I mean, my third of, day, I mean, I second day was great. Third day, I don't. I mean, what happened? Like, Let's talk about what yeah, happened. Ta- my water muddied up. It, that wind crashed in. I, I actually found fish on the islands on a main lake, and the water was dropping, and those fish were coming to the points on those islands and to the to the where they where they broke, and those big fish were coming there. And I mean, that's that second day. I could call my shot. It really? Was great. Yes. It was insane. Now, you said don't bring right, right Patman. How about you? Like what? I just said we can't use that as an example. <laughs> I've been fishing for eight years all over the country almost as a, as a full-time job. I've never seen anything like that. I was so wrong on my predictions that, you know, I almost just wrote that one off as a whatever. You know, I can't believe the way it's got better. Here's- I remember driving to the weigh-in on day two, and I had an okay bag, and I was listening to the weigh-in, and I had to shut it off in my car on the way to the weigh-in because I was just getting angry every time. 20 pounds, 22 <laughs> pounds. And I was like, surely the weights can't keep getting better after everybody just blitzed them day one of yeah. shallow, can they? Yeah, but it was the perfect storm. Yeah. We had two days. Those first two days set up, we had that front coming in. The and water was, was two falling. Days. The water was falling. And the two days of front before that front, that's why yes. you've seen those mega bags come out of that place. I mean, it, it, it was the perfect scenario for that yeah and it was what 40 almost 45 to cut a check yeah and that and like, it, it's what i was the first one out of a check by like what an you ounce have? uh i don't i couldn't tell you you missed it by an ounce like I cut an ounce or two just that's a, a hard but, ride home right there I, boy. I was happy honestly as a shallow water fishery just to even be there but oh, it man. uh you know it it, it, what's what makes fishing a place like right patman very difficult in the future is because we did hit that just right if we hit that wrong, that would have been a bloodbath, man. I mean, a bloodbath. Like, if the water had been up a little higher and the fish were where we couldn't get to yeah. them, um, or it had muddied up differently. Um, you know, I but, feel like the first day of practice, and I don't know if Greg can do that, the first day of practice really wasn't that great. No. Because the fish were still up in there. They weren't oh, there. Yeah. They hadn't pulled back yet. And, when, you know, when they, that happened, it was crazy. It, it was, was a good one. storm for sure. Look, yeah, this is going good. I hate to push you guys off, but we got two more cool cats coming in here. Mm-hmm. Before we shove off, I need you to tell the folks, first of all, thank whoever you want to thank. Say hi to whoever you want to say hi to and tell them where they can follow Jesse Millsap. Uh, I got a Facebook page and Instagram, but Abby Garcia, Berkeley, True Grit Tackle, Dave's Lures, uh, Elite Response. I mean, all those guys are what helped me get out here. Right on. Uh, all my family for watching and, you know, all my friends and everybody, so rooting me on. So maybe we can keep the train rolling. Right on, brother. You're killing it. Greg, man, talk to him. <laughs> 
Hey, well, first, good luck this week, Jesse. You too, um, you're easy sportsmanship, to the brotherhood, the camaraderie. I love he it. He doesn't mean it. No, yeah, dude, I can tell. You're an easy guy to cheer for from what I can tell, and I yeah, do like man. that. There's a bunch of guys out here easy to cheer for, yeah. and uh, we'll all be rooting for you. And we're blessed with a good group of guys, man, yep. no doubt. Oh, uh, this is this fat cat guy. I don't know about him. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know about me. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, you know, I've got I've been on the road for six weeks, and I've got my uh, beautiful wife Kelly over here with uh, with my kids. Everybody, the support that she's given me to be able to travel like I'm doing to chase my dream is is unbelievable. So, friend, and all my friends and family, I'm sure I'm going to have a bunch of texts making fun of me when I get back over to my phone. So, <laughs> everybody's tuning in, watching. Thank you. You know, people that have helped make this happen for me um, citywide. Uh, you know, I worked and owned the franchise there for 15 years. Everybody that's been up there busting their butt that's allowed me to come out and do this is super helpful. Um, and then a bunch of people in the fishing world that have started to kind of take notice and help, uh, both Joel and I, but Stryker, um, Dakota Lithium, Swagger Tungsten, Swaggy up in Wisconsin. You make the best Tungsten. He's got a little secret for me here this week. I'll maybe maybe let out after we're done. Um, you know, and, uh, and Amphibia Eyewear. Uh, just everybody that's made it possible. Uh, we're coming off a Memorial Day weekend. I mean, I'd be remiss if I didn't say to everybody that's given their life. So that I mean, we're out. Worst case is I don't catch them this week and I go home pouty right yeah <laughs> you have people that throughout the course of life not knowing anything about the people that they were sacrificing for gave their life this weekend and that's something i i was so hot and busy out there didn't even get to make a social media post so everybody on uh, the military either active duty or who's or who have you know made the ultimate sacrifice for us to get to chase this dream so brad can start a company here and help us go fishing but um you know this is uh you know a lot of fun we want to and then you know al and y'all taking a risk trying to make this thing happen and, and going through our learning curve and pain of starting stuff new this year you guys are awesome and um you know let's see what happens this week this is ready to get after it so right all man look forward to seeing yeah. what both of y'all do man good luck thanks so. appreciate you guys man thanks. yeah all right. All, right. all right guys fishman central episode three stop three harris chain nice job jesse so we got we're here we're at a special place right b we're a special place. Oh, yeah. This place is awesome. Chicago dude. Fire. It's that, it's that local watering hole yeah. with the good food, the good vibes. So we're going to bring the owner in. Cool, John. Going to sit down. Big John. Talk about Chicago Fire, brew pub. They, they brew their own beer right here. That's yeah, awesome. My granddad used to do that. <laughs> it wasn't beer, D though. Different, but the hey, same. Hey, listen, folks. TNPFL.com is where you're going to watch all 21 hours of live coverage by Luke Duncan. And David Dudley's fill-in, Bradley Hallman. Crazy. Yeah, this could be crazy. Yeah. I know Dudley's like, man, he don't even like hearing that. But Bradley Hallman, he'll keep your seat warm for you, Dudley. And then me, I'll be doing all your on-the-water stuff. You can watch us, tnpfl.com and YouTube Live, the National Professional Fishing League YouTube page. <laughs> Old Big John in the house. Look out, man. Hey, That's a great Chicago fire. Great, great Chicago Ooh. fire brewery, downtown Leesburg. Look at that voice. He's got some pipes on him. Whoa, listen. <laughs> Bear with me. I just knocked the camera over. Uh -oh. uh You guys are good. We're good, man. Landed on it. Yeah, Landed man, a little bit of music would yeah, be, be sweet. Hey, listen. All right, man. First of all, very fine establishment. Thank you. Everything's been great. The service, especially the air conditioner and the fans. Big fan of that. <laughs> <laughs> Consider we're in Florida. Man, give us a little background. So I am from Chicago, hence the great Chicago Shot Fire Brewery. Yes. All right. I am uh, a firefighter in Chicago, and I moved down here. And appreciate your service, bud. I appreciate that. Thank you. And we, uh, city wanted a brewery, so we built a brewery, and we were trying, what kind of food can't you get down here? And you can't get good Chicago food down here. So we, uh, we brought it down here, Thin Crust Pizza, Chicago Italian Beefs, uh, Chicago Dogs, you know, nice. Pizza Puffs, uh, the Maxwell Street Polish. It's all everything that you grew up with in Chicago. We got it down right here. That's awesome. So, you heard it, man. You guys come to Leesburg to vacation, hang out, bebop and flip flop, go out there, jack jaws and rip lips. This is where you need to come to fill your belly up and get a cold beverage. Yes, John. So, talk about the brewery, right? So, we, we, yeah. brew, we brew 10 of our own beers here, which is kind of cool. And the neat thing about it, Todd, our brewmaster, we only brew in half barrels. We're considered a nano brewery. So, we brew small batches, but we brew a lot of different beers. So, even though our menu is pretty consistent, Every time you come in here, beer is always different. We got three core beers: our house IPA, or we have the uh, Southern Brown and the um, the Three Eleven Amber. But the other seven beers, it's, it's up for grabs. You guys ever experiment, and make anything crazy? Like yes, we talk. did. Oh, Let me yeah. tell you a little story. <laughs> so we got some friends, and they're called Bubba J. He's got this little Facebook page called Bubba J's Dive Bar, and he come to me and he says, "Can you make some beer like Bud Light?" And I said. 
Well, I don't know if he's your sponsor, so I'm not going to say what I said. But <laughs> And I says, yeah, we can do that. And then Todd went back. And I said, Todd, I need you to make this beer. It's for this group of people called Bubba Jays. He goes, okay. He brew it. He, we put a keg out here. And, and I think in less than, what, 40 minutes or a half hour, we killed the keg. It was the fastest we've ever killed a keg here before. And we all have Bubba J, Bubba J, Bubba J dive bar shirts, and it became sort of a thing. That's cool, man. <laughs> That's all right. That's a cool story. <laughs> Shout out to Bubba J. What's up, buddy? Hope the dog bar is going good. What's what's the favorite? What does everybody come back for? Probably the service and your sweet smile. Uh, it's, it's, it's um, I would say the staff's awesome, but uh, the Italian beef. We have a really good tell. And we started this pizza a few years back, and these pizzas seem to take it off. It's that thin crust Chicago style pizza. And if you notice, we cut it in squares. We don't cut it in slices yeah. because we say, you know, you fold your laundry, you don't fold your pizza. <laughs> Listen, he's got all the stuff. <laughs> So how long have you been here? How long has this been? Well, we'll be five years in August. It'll be our fifth year anniversary here. So right on. Kind man. of excited about that. You, you do any fishing yourself? Uh, if you want to call it that. <laughs> What's your style of fishing? What do you like doing? Uh, I let the minnows swim around and catch some. We uh, we go every year to uh, Fremont, Wisconsin, white bass fishing. I think they call them stripers down here. In fact, we were just up there a couple of weeks ago. Just came back. We kind of missed the well. Yeah, we kind of missed the run by either before, during, or after the run, and we were. The people who come the next week, they tore it up. That's how it seems We like. caught a good buzz, though. <laughs> At least you caught some. <laughs> what you got? Hey, man, we want to thank you on behalf of the MPFL staff and, and the whole league. When we came down here and did our visit, when Paul and I came here, we said, hey, man, if we only get to go to one place, this you're our people. So well, that's, uh, I really, truly, honestly yeah. appreciate it. On behalf of Jay and the staff and everybody here, we're honored to have you here. Yeah, awesome, man. It's going to be a great week. I don't think you've seen the last of us throughout the road. We're here <laughs> through, like, next Saturday. Cool. So. Thank you for stopping in with us. We we'll appreciate you that. Thank for opening your place and, and welcoming us in here. The anglers are having a great time. We're having a great time. So we can't, we're going to get our next set of anglers in here. Sure. Thank you so much. We Thank really you. appreciate it, Jay. Thanks, John. John. Appreciate it, bud. Good stuff, man. So, guys, if you're in Leesburg, Florida, awesome little Main Street area down here, right? Like, it's it's the Veterans Memorial that, that we did a Facebook post on yesterday um, that, that you went down and took a look at. How fitting to find that. Right, man. Find it. We literally found it on Memorial Day. So, it was, yeah. you guys came back and, dude, it, it was it was a very special moment for me. So, yeah, I, I appreciate you It was cool, you guys doing man. That. It was, it was that, that memorial. It's the walk down. You see the pond in the back. They had the helicopter. It was Oh, good your, stuff. Your Instagram was fire, dude. The, yeah. the song, this. Hey, oh, dude. Oh, hey. hugging out. Look. Oh, my God. Fisherman <laughs> Central, guys. <laughs> I'm talking about making Listen, a fat cat sandwich. Let, oh, wow. Ha, have Dan put his headset on because I'm going to make this statement right up front. Oh, here we go. Leave oh, alone, oh, right? Oh, Wait, say smoke. something now before he hears the smoke. Hears the smoke. <laughs> I can it. hear it. Yeah. Oh. No, man. Here's the deal. I know you guys all got some. You got some history. Like, I, I, you know, this is going to be a special kind of part of the podcast. Thank you guys for coming, but, you know, Dan, that, you guys all know, like, you guys literally all know each other, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah so, for sure, yeah. So just let's keep our lips on each other, on, on ourselves <laughs> and not on each other. That got way too tight right Take there. Take your hand off my hey, leg. Hey, right, there I, we go. My hands are above the uh, table. We're good. The we, other hand. Tell, oh, us who, oh, tell, the us who the, tell us who these guys are. Joe Discerny. What's your name again? Dan. <laughs> Dan Blackett. How do, how do I, what, what's your title with Fisherman Central? Oh, I'm president. President of Fisherman Central. The man. <laughs> and as you know, Fisherman Central is a sponsor of the roundtable and also this event, correct? Yeah, yeah, the event sponsor. Yeah, so Huge thank you deal. for that, yeah. yeah. And for you, those, and I talk about I probably talk about it too much. I'm going to talk about it more, especially since he's here. But Fisherman Central is one of the biggest probably, I don't know if on the East Coast, I don't know where, but their Akron is the first one, right? Yeah. 25, 27,000 square feet? Yeah. Bass tackle. Bobby, twenty over 25,000 square feet of bass tackle. It is crazy. They opened up another one up on Lake Erie in Catawba, 30-some thousand square feet. Bass tackle, but they have some walleye stuff, a little bit more stuff in there too, right? Yeah, yeah, we're, trying to get, yeah we're trying to get more into that walleye stuff. They got a little showroom in there for your yep. boats. They do Vexus, Skeeter, Phoenix, G3. That's correct. So if you guys are in the area, you guys are looking for stuff, Fisherman Central, they got your tackle, they got your boat. So, B, what if they're not in the area? FishermanCentral.com. Just Come. launched a new website that is wall-to-wall, treetop tall. You need to check it out. Over $50, free shipping. And here's the deal with the website. You guys have to understand something. We're in Ohio, right? We're on this side of the country. 
you make an order, more than likely it's going to get filled that day and either shipped that day or shipped the next day. I so, can't tell you that. By what the, way. the mailman does, I can't tell you. But from what <laughs> I understand, things have been going pretty smooth with that. They've been steadily filling orders. Wait, yeah. wait, I can double check on that. So I just moved to Alabama, uh, FYI, if anybody didn't know that already. But um, I had to order some stuff this week because we were coming down here and had to get some big boy stuff. So I ordered from Fisherman Central and it got there the two day that I ordered. So it was actually no problem. So. Get into the website. And, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can see it there. All it's right. no problem. It's real, dude. Like, the SKUs, I, I've ta- we said this. Was, you, the JDM selection, the hard-to-find selection, the hard-to-find colors, whether it's Zoom, whether it's Z-Man, whether it's Gary Yamamoto, the Berkeley. And it is – what he does, he'll call the company. Hey, um, this will be good, um, everything you got. All right, see you later. <laughs> That's how it goes. It's crazy when you walk in there. But go ahead, Brad. Well, I was just going to say – I think we've checked the Fisherman Central box. <laughs> right, Dan, yeah, are we yeah. good? Yeah. yeah. He's, yeah. Like, he's like, good. we're good. We're so, good. No, but seriously, man, like, I, I can't thank you enough. You and I had the conversation about this event, no, no. and it, it's just, it worked out. Like, I truly believe in what you guys are doing up there. You guys believe in MPFL. It's a great partnership. I want to hear what the Ohio boys have to say about Florida. Yeah, well, I know you got some history down here. You, you, you're familiar with Florida. Yeah, and you made a post the other day. I love this place. <laughs> so yeah. You still love this place. So, the yeah. yeah, not so much uh, now, but yeah, no, no, I, I, no. I still love Florida. It's a uh, home away from home. My, yeah, about 15 years ago, my best friend, one of my best friends, moved down here. So uh, about every year, uh, February ish, you know, when we're under snow in Ohio, I'll, I'll fly down here and it'll take me to different places. So we we've been here quite a bit. Yeah. All right. Yeah, this is uh What about Joe? Does Joe know anything about this place? He doesn't, but you know, that's Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here for Joe, uh Joe three days s- now, so yeah. yeah, Joe will stumble on a six pounder. I guarantee you the, the, the it's just Joe. It's just, he's gonna he's gonna go out there, he's gonna look at a map and go, That looks good and then the next thing you know he's gonna be catching fish. You know, I, I, I just I can't do that. <laughs> I, Have you always had that little thing? I mean, this, this is just something I don't know, yeah. I've had some uh, some opportunities for mapping to just literally nothing even it's not like ledge fishing or contours or anything. It's just saying, oh, that looks good over there. Like Let's going go. with your gut in yeah, a way? Literally. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's literally all it is. I'm sorry, you land them on it, you follow. <laughs> yeah. Like here's Joe in the middle of the lake, and it's like, hey, uh, I've got like 19 pounds, and I've been fishing for 20 Dude, minutes. You, was... you may want to get a camera over here. <laughs> and it was opposite, actually. You were, the best story you told me was in the morning when you were trying to get everything wrapped and running. You were like, hey, uh, I think it's who, – who runs the, uh, uh, the, the live feed? Bobby. The, the live feed, right? So the guy that runs it. Yeah. He's like – Kyle, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I think we should reset this. And you were like, no, why? why? Yeah. You are like, Some, somebody already has like eight pounds, nine pounds on there. And I was like – he's like, no, 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 let it go. Like, that's probably real. Yeah. He, he's like, oh, hey, this guy – like, we, some, there's something <laughs> wrong when, with the deal. Is that, like, <laughs> is that when you were fishing the Creek Channel? That was that area. When that, I rolled in on you? It was the other part of it, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, that first spot. Yeah. Are you going to do good here like you did at Ufala? I know you hope you want to. But how yeah, do you feel going into yeah, it? Yeah, no, so honestly, I didn't know what to expect because I felt like when it gets hot in Ohio, where I'm from, uh, fish like to go super deep or deeper or bury in the weeds, right? There's kind of not that good thick grass here, right? So they sprayed it. It's weird, right? So... I didn't know what to expect. I thought it was going to be an offshore deal only and deep water and super hot water, but that's not been my case. Uh, it, I think it's good. I mean, I, I, I think it fish is similar to Ohio in a weird way, actually. I've, been, I've never fished up there with you guys at yeah. Portage and Mosquito yeah. where I always hear you yeah. guys talk about. Well, what I do always hear you guys talk about is the grass. It's yeah, similar grass. technique, very grass. similar technique. Very yeah, similar yeah, I mean, we're grass fishermen. I mean, right. for sure. So when you get down in the lake, it's supposed to have grass. Yeah. And uh, you can find very little of it, except for, obviously, the Kissimmee grass. Well, but, uh, unless I want to go more into that, because you guys are grass fishermen, especially with your experience here. What type of grass are you looking for? What keys you in on? You roll up to a whole stretch. Are you looking for a mixture of certain grass? You, like, what, what does Dan look for? Well, I, right now I was looking for the offshore stuff, 8 to 10, 12 foot of water. I mean, that's uh, you go to Butler Chain, you go to uh, some of these other lakes around here, they don't spray, and you're out in 12 to 20 foot of water with weeds. And, and you know, you're throwing that speed worm, swim jig, getting it down deep, uh, ounce, half ounce weight. And, uh, you know, you're catching quality fish. Here, here that stuff's gone, and the water's muddied up quite a bit. You know, you got some... Clear water when you get towards Door and Blue Clear, but nothing like uh, uh, you would expect, you know. And when you find that clear water in Blue Clear, it's no, there's no grass. The, the, there's, there's no, no grass. grass, right? So, 
there's some grass in uh, the Big Harris and some grass in Little Harris. Uh, there's there's spotty, very, very spotty grass in like 8 to 10 foot of water. When you find that, if you can find some of that good stuff, they're they're in it. They're really? in it. They're hard. To, yeah, yeah. The wind's been blowing pretty hard, so it's hard to fish some of it. But when you find that stuff, uh, they're in it. But what's interesting is if you get on the right stretch in the Kissimmee grass, yeah, you, you're almost better off than trying to fish that deep stuff right now. Gotcha. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, we we I'm learning more and more about the Kissimmee grass and how it matches up to and what we talked to a few guys today and it's the Kissimmee grass and the the. I don't know what y'all call the, the yeah right. They have nowhere else to go. I mean, when you spray the when you spray the lake dead and there's nothing else, where are yeah. they going to go? Well, and then well, even with the spraying goes, and we we've talked about this a little bit, to where they could spray it. They could have sprayed it Sunday, but you won't realize they sprayed it until you go back possibly Thursday <laughs> or Friday morning, right? <laughs> you could have practiced sprayed water for sure. Yeah, yeah. So I don't I don't know. Uh, I mean, my my game plan right now is to stick to the Kissimmee and look for some buggy whips, mix in, you know, some of the different grasses together. What'd you call them? Uh, buggy whips. Oh, okay. That's the first time I heard that. Do you heard buggy whips before? Have you? I guess I'm just dumb. What's the other term? Toolies? It's the same That's thing. why I hear toolies. Yeah, yeah. Toolies? Buggy whips. Buggy in, whips? in Ohio, they're reeds. No, no, no. There's there's cat there's, tails. Yeah, there's cattails, but there's also those thin, you know, like pointy ones. They're those are same. buggy whips. Dude, the uh, is, <laughs> I don't think they're the same. <laughs> they're all the same. They're well, not the, Kissimmee grass. They're there's like same. 79 <laughs> different types oh, yeah. of the same bird here, though. So they could be like the same thing with grass. Yeah. It is a crazy. Yeah. I've never been down here like on the water and fishing like I am. It's like you're at a daggone zoo, wait, bro. Wait, wait, oh, and there's all kinds of stuff that like will look at you when you're in oh, the yeah. water. Did you go to, did like you go there's to... mud puppies, or <laughs> I don't know what they. They'll come up and surface, and you'll just like see something looking at Make you. And they contact. turn around, yeah, yeah. It's like oh, I, don't <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. The more fun part is, did you go through the door canal yet? No, I have not. Oh, you're missing out. I heard like and they, they it said is so cool. We didn't have we didn't have six hours to burn, so we didn't touch yeah, it this weekend. Pretty, well, pretty much. I went through there last. <laughs> The first night at, like, 8 o'clock, I made it back on time, by the way. Check. And I had Pink Floyd, the the wall, just the CD playing. Or not the CD, but the, the, the whole album. It was the creepiest thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it but, was the yeah, creepiest yeah. thing. <laughs> well, Nobody was in there. It was just yeah. me. It's I, like Jurassic Park, go. Brad. You expect, oh, yeah. like, a brontosaurus to come out of there. Or <laughs> monkeys, he, he's going to get to see it. Yeah, I, want, sure yeah, I want to see the man. It's, they were talking about, you know. Oh, I had, one scare me to, I had one scare me. Like, oh, did you? To, oh, yeah, yeah. How'd that go down? Yeah, yeah, it scared me in Little Harris. Yeah, I just come on. I mean, I'm, it's it's quiet. Nobody's around. I just hear this, you know, <laughs> like, it's loud, you know. I turn around, and this thing's just, you know, coming up. It, my buddy told me one time, he said, I thought I had a flat tire in my boat. <laughs> yeah. Really? That's what it sounds like, right? <laughs> exactly. They're huge, and they're so big, you don't realize how big they are. You know? It looks like yeah. me swimming past your boat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean... <laughs> Put on a mermaid suit. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, got, I got one. This, oh, what a yeah. coincidence. It's right on three with it. We're good. Take it everywhere with me. So, dude, well, what's your practice been like, Joe? It's been good. I, I can't lie. I mean, it's been good. I don't know how consistent it's going to be, but it, it's not been bad. Let's put it that way. Put that mic up a little bit for me. It's up towards your lips. There you how about go. that? You don't hey. want to hear my chin? Okay. Yeah. No, practice has been okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't want to divulge too much. But Understood. No, no, I mean, yeah. it's hard because. No, you will divulge more. <laughs> Here's the problem. There's only. There, it's all the same, right? So to me, everything looked the same. Everything, you know, when you say pick a spot on the map, literally I picked a spot on the map. This morning I was like, I'm just going to go hit this random spot. I don't know anything about this place. I've never been here. And flipped into some grass. And So he needs to play the lottery is what he's I need saying. To, no, no, don't do not do that. We'd know better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd know better. Don't do that. No, 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 no. No, no, no. So I, I flipped in and had one pull down and try not to set the hook on some stuff and just getting some bites, and it hooked itself, and it was about a six-pounder. And I was like... That was a good landing spot, right? Right on. And then uh, had about seven, eight, nine more bites through there and was like, well, that's cool. And uh, went to another whole completely different area, doing a little bit different thing. Caught another six-pounder. So I don't What'd know. What you catch him on? A bait. <laughs> a lure. Lure. I'm trying, man. Is, I'm it, just is trying. it lure? Lure. 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 Yeah. Did you catch it in the water? In the water. <laughs> water. What's the Alabama accent? I just moved I don't there, even so know, I, man. I don't, even, I don't yeah. even know. Hey. How did you get ready for this tournament? Like you said, you, you don't have any experience down I've here? I've never been here. Yeah, I, so what did you do to prepare for it? I uh, watched MLF last week. Right on. <laughs> so uh, have you caught yourself out there like, kind of doing that? Like, kind no, of like, I mean, honestly, there's a lot of history on Harris throughout the years, and there's been a lot of fish catches, and most of them are in the spring, so it's hard to kind of prepare that way. But um, knowing that there would be grass or some, tor- some sort of flipping, you guys – I was on live at Ufala flipping, right? So right. aside from being offshore, but um, I prefer to fish grass and flipping. So I rigged up a bunch of flipping rods and 
um, some moving baits like chatter bait, swim bait, and I I wanted to do the speed worm thing, but like you said, there's no gra there's no when we say grass, like I'm so I'm talking about hydrilla bats, like I'm talking about matted up or almost matted up hydrilla in almost 20 feet of water, and that stuff isn't here. So I, I you know I kind of hope that it would be here, but honestly, watching MLF last week, it wasn't the deal. It, right. There wasn't even any to look for, so it isolated what I would do, but. Um, Pretty much something flipping is what I love to do, and this is the part of the country you can do it in. No doubt about and, that. And, and, and honestly, like literally I'm saying this, my, my mantra this whole week will literally be every cast could be a 10-pounder. And, and honestly, you're in the part of the country where it can be. So Yeah, no doubt about I, that. I, I, I'm fishing on just pure, uh, just ready. Like every single pitch, I, I don't know. Like nowhere else in the country have I ever fished where literally you could catch your my personal best any cast so i'm what's I'm your personal ready. best like four pounds like seven <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i mean yeah. you're from ohio yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't know and hey, we got seven yeah. i know we i know sevens. i'm teasing i'm teasing yeah. dude so there's six pounders six Sixes. Pounders. yeah if you catch a seven in ohio you're doing something oh special. yeah yeah or you're fishing a illegal well, you, pond when we yeah, talked right. about we you know he made the announcement of where the championship's going to be at it's ohio river <laughs> okay oh. we win <laughs> all right i'm in I'm in. 14 out of, pounds, three-day total. Out of Pittsburgh? Yeah, yeah, yeah out of yeah, Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, my. Okay. Hey, so with your experience down here, <laughs> with your experience no. and everything down here, man, how do you see this tournament going? Like, for you, but just in general, like, what what do you think we'll see? We're going to see some big bags, or is everybody kind of overestimating what can happen? Because we've heard 30-pound sacks, high 20 sacks. So we've like, heard from I, – I, I wrote this down last night. 51 is yeah. the low. To, to win? To, now, to win. Yeah. To seventy-eight. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, well, you know, a couple when, down here on practice. Uh, there were some nines and some eights caught in practice. They, you know, we caught them, and and I would have said, you know, that that way to, in the high seventies would have been accurate. But uh, things have changed here quite a bit. So I, I'm going to say in that fifty-four, fifty-five pound range. Is, okay. Is well, then, what do you think right a big now? bag could be? Uh, Twenty. 25. I think you could see a 25, but it's gonna dra It's gonna drop. I mean, you're gonna get that that big bite first. It's, these places aren't really replenishing, you know. Right. And, and um, uh, Greg said something earlier uh, that it's very true: is that you can pull into a spot and and really load a boat on on this place, and um, and it can be loaded. But the next day they're they're completely gone. Yeah. So it's in, Florida, it is, right? Like it that's, is a that's Florida. A, yeah, it's heartbreak a, heartbreak ridge right here, a man. Florida is a Florida bite. Um, so and and I saw that in practice day one. I pulled into an area. I practiced uh, just just lightly. I thought you know I'd go through it with a Senko and kind of power flip a Senko through there, and and I got a lot of good bites off of well, it. Describe power flip real quick. Just to, well, just like a half ounce weight a Senko and five and, inch. Yeah, five inch, five and a half inch. Uh, typically, you know, black and blue down here has always been a really good color, uh, especially with the muddy water. But you can, you know, these bass, uh, they'll, I hate to say this about flipping, but a lot of bass will eat just about anything flipping. That's more of a reaction bite, right? It, 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 it's the drop, it's the size, and the, it, it's the, the profile, the, more. the drop weight. Got right, okay. Right, right. Yeah. So, so a lot of times that, that one ounce will trigger a, a trigger a bite, a, a fast drop. You know, you go to New York in a foot of water, and you can throw an oh, ounce and a half weight, and it'll trigger that bite on a smallmouth. Uh, down here, it's the same way. So, you know, sometimes you put an eighth ounce weight, tungsten weight, on a, on a, a Senko and go down the outside of the grass or a speed worm. And, you know, they went that. And then the other times, you know, you got to figure out, <clears throat> will they hit that, hit that on a fast drop? Oh, do you throw a speed worm right there at the house around, like, Portage or Mosquito? Oh, yeah, yeah, Mosquito, yeah, yeah you throw a speed worm there. Okay. <clears throat> Watermelon um, red, yeah, so typically, or something like that. For the, for the entire season so far, Big Fish is 615. For the whole year, yeah, that's big yeah, fish. It'll, it'll be broken. Down I here. think that. What do you think? It'll, what do you think it'll be? And man, I'm hoping to see somebody catch a real big one. Yeah, because <clears throat> we in, all are. They're in here. Yeah, I, I, you know, I think a, an eight plus. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm really hoping. I'm not that I'm on an eight plus. I just, I just think that that's going to be a, that'll be a big fish for for this time of year. Well, how about you, Joe? What do you think as far as big fish goes? I think the same thing. I mean, and and to kind of reiterate what Dan said, but change it is. You're never on them. It, it could happen any time. I yeah. mean, seriously, I say that, and I said it earlier, like any fish could be a 10-pounder. I mean, it could absolutely happen. They live here. I think an over eight would happen, though, for sure. Yeah. I think there's too many of them in here not to for 100 guys, three days. It, it, it's hard to say. And, and 
they're not as spread out as they would be because of the lack of hydrilla. So if there's less places for these fish to be and that many more anglers hitting more concentrated areas, yeah, exactly. the possibility yeah, to catch pulling. an ape, yeah, yeah, they're just tighter to, to places. So you could absolutely see an eight pounder that way. Now, if there was tons of hydrilla and Kissimmee and docks and deep, it might be a little bit harder. It, it might be, but... I think this time around the eight pounders could show up because of that. So that you know, I, I'm the contrast. So I like to point out when you're different from everything else. Yeah. You were the first guy. So this would be uh, Sunday, Monday. This is Number Tuesday, three, yeah. correct? Right. Yeah. So you're the first guy to ask that question. That said under nine pounds. Every single angler said nine plus, easy, no doubt, going to happen. Well, if they caught them, I mean, if they caught them, then maybe. But I, <laughs> here's the, I mean, here's the thing. Like they. There's a lot of big fish in this lake. So, and I said eight plus. Like, it could be a ten. It could be a. Oh, that's I don't know. true. It, it okay. could be forty-five pounds. No, eight no, plus. I, I want to point something answer. out, though. I, I want to point something out, though. MLF was here, and you had the Lane brothers in right. here. You had these guys in here. Yeah. These these are uh, these are Florida-born fishermen. These guys were not looking for two pounders. No. They were looking for big fish. I mean, it's yeah. a ten thousand dollar fish, if I'm not wrong. For yeah, their, I think so. For yeah. their big bass. If Bobby Lane, Chris Lane, and some of these Florida guys, a 9-9, nine, nine, a 9-something was their big fish. 9-4, I think, or 9-2, yeah. something like that, yeah. Right, it was a single fish. Uh, you know, obviously, that, that's a great catch. Yeah. But, you know, them guys, uh, there wasn't a lot of 8-9 pounders caught no. in, in, in that. Tons no. of 6s and 5s, right? You're right. Like, tons. If you look at Bobby Lane's So weight, a couple of weeks day. ago, when we were practicing, the bluegill spawn was happening, right? Yeah. So. And they were on the tail end of it. You know, I, yeah, I went, I went down the shoreline where I had bites and waypoints at, and I went back and looked with, with my Garmin, uh, you know, that, that live image there. And it's amazing how many bluegill beds I've seen. I mean, it was just the, the bites that I were getting in practice was because all of them bluegill. In every waypoint that I had, I saw all these bluegill beds. So I knew what the bass were doing. The question is, is where do the bass go? Right. Yeah. Where right. do the bluegill go? Where do the bluegill go? Right. Where do the tilapia go? Right. Where do they all go? Where are they going? Because, man, based on them beds, there's a lot of bluegill on this lake. Yeah. So I, I don't know, or, or brim, whatever you want yeah. to call them. But brim. Brim. What a perch, <laughs> depending on where you are in the country. Perch? Uh, perch, yeah, man. Yeah. So you touched on something. Uh, talking about big, the big fish at MLF was 10,000. We have Big Bass Challenge, right? Yep. What is our Big Bass paying for this? If they so, if you're in Big Bite Challenge, it'll be Big Bite five, Challenge. So it'll be five thousand. No, I'm in I mean, well, I tell you what, I got I don't even get updates from from Jeff from Jeff okay. Dobson, but it, it'll be at least five thousand. And then if you're big fish overall, it'll be six thousand. Right yeah. on. Nice. There you go, man. Nice. That's nice. sweet. I might have nice. to call Jeff this week. I'm not in it yet, but I, I might have to. get Oh this man, week. you got to sign up for that. Just you, you never know. Every that, every that catch to be a ten happen. pounder. So yeah, never know if you do catch that happen. big fish and you didn't sign up, you're gonna when. When, when I, uh, <laughs> yeah, when I like your style. I mean, dude, legit. Like you, if no, you're going seriously. to do it in a place, like if you've yeah. waited, you're like, I'm going to strategically wait. Yeah. Every, like, you could put a blindfold on. I drop you in the lake, and you just start flipping. You for can three catch it. Yeah, if you flip for three days. You could very well catch an eight pounder. Absolutely. Why not? Yep. Why not? Yeah. I want to ask you a question. Go for it, brother. After you follow, yeah, you had a good tournament. I did have a good tournament. You made a Facebook post. Which one? The one talking about how you wanted to. More or less, I forget the, the exact verbiage, but it was basically about proving yourself proving and showing the world. Oh, yeah. Can you go into that a little bit about, you know, that it's your, you're fishing the National Professional Fishing League. It's your first time fishing as a professional, would you say? Uh, kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, by far. I mean, okay. Costa Series doesn't, I wouldn't count that personally. So, yeah. Let's, I want to go into, like, as far as your mindset going into NPFL and, like, just you feel like you have something to prove is the vibe that I get from that post, right? Yeah, I think that's because that's just always been me. Uh, I kind of – I've always I've always appreciated the underdog story. You know, I, I just always have. And then I've almost taken that persona on for some reason. I don't even know why, actually. I just kind of always have. Um, it always it, – I, I played sports my whole life. You know, I played football and baseball and, you know, just been competitive my whole life. I think that's – where that nature comes from and uh i've never really had i don't want to say opportunity i've had some opportunities but i never really like went had the right had everything come together the right way right so that's kind of uh i just wanted to say look I, i'm not just the ohio guy i'm not just the guy that fishes local events i'm not just the guy that kind of travels a little bit I, I really i really understand how to catch fish I, that's that was my proving point is i, I enjoyed yeah. the post i liked it because yeah, it just yeah, showed yeah. your passion yeah. and for like your goals and where you want to go and 
you chose to do it with the National Professional Fishing League, which I think is you know, it's yeah. special to me. Well, yeah. that, that wasn't a, you know, Joe and I had a lot of this. Like, it was, yeah. Joe was, a, I, we were, there were a couple classes of guys or conversations the way they went with when you group them together. There were guys like, hey, man, I'm in. Done. There yeah. were guys like, I don't know. Yeah, I'm in. And then there were the guys like, man, I really want to make sure I make the right decision. And we had a lot of we talks. We did. And Joe was in that, hey, man, let's talk about this. And, and I felt like we had that underdog, or we still have that, like, hey, man, we're the new guys on the yeah. block, right? Like, I have something to prove as, as the MPFL ownership group to say, hey, this ain't going anywhere, man. Like, yeah. like, like it or not, we're coming, we're here oh, because of guys that are, si- too, that are sitting here, man, and, and, it's, and it's getting out there. So I think that has a something to do that with that came, post as well. Yeah, yeah. I, and that, here's the thing. I, it actually spawns a lot from that because – I, I've been a student of the game for a, my whole life, honestly. I mean, I, I know everybody says, oh, I watched TNN when I was a kid. No, no, no. I can almost relate to every single event. And elite, I, I followed the elites. I followed FLW. I knew all the guys' names. I don't know anybody personally, honestly. I, I don't know any of these guys. But I feel like I do because I literally can go back and relate to all these stories and all these things. And I just I took it all to heart. So now to say that I'm – semi in that class i guess i mean it's cool like it feels good you know and to say i'm here you know what i mean like i'm not um how old are you i'm 34 okay right on yeah 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 Yeah, so i'm not super young yeah right (laughs) dan just his birthday was yesterday 34 inches again i'm kidding yeah 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 um (laughs) sorry 35 we'll give him 35 let's talk about you we you have a lot on your plate bro i've seen it firsthand and I know what you do is not easy. What was the decision like for you, man, coming on board with the NPFL? Because why? Well, going my, on? Man. I think I think our conversation was different, man. It was like, damn, yeah. why? Why do you want to do this? I'm like, hey, man, you're absolutely. You know, we had a long yeah. conversation, and I'm like, but why? Yeah, right. No, I, no, I, it's an opportunity. Uh, I see Joe's underdog stories. Uh, we. Is the MPFL is an underdog, yeah. and but Very, I, you yeah. know we're we're a strong underdog. Never count the underdog out. Right? I'm going to tell you what this is a great ran circuit, uh, good lakes, good people, man. The people in this is uh, uh, I can't say enough about that. So it, you know I wanted to see what it was like before uh, my partners and I decided we were going to sponsor this event. And the very first tournament, I knew it. I knew we want to be part of this. Yeah. So. Uh, what better way to spread, you know, spread the world, the word about uh, people like Joe, people like myself, just these weekend guys who want to get out and fish. This is a place to do it. Watch us fish. We're just we're normal working class guys. Truly, no, nobody. I don't think you're a fish for a living. Uh, but it, 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 yeah, we got guys, and we every tournament, man. When weigh ins over, yeah. they're headed back to the house. They got to be at work Monday oh, morning. Yeah. I, I know I am. You know, Personal. I mean, <laughs> I, yeah. I, yeah, I thank my partners a lot for uh, <laughs> for dealing with me being gone because they have to hold down a fort. Do you want to text Dave now? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it, 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 Brad, the Ohio crew rolls thick. Yeah, yeah. man, it's weird. I, I right? was, I Bro. felt, I felt like, Bro. man, you, you know, we, we when I started getting all these applications, I'm like, here's another hug, here's another, and then they all know each other. Kind of, yeah. like, like I think there's a couple groups. Yeah, there is. Like, like ever, but if you really, if you did the connecting game. Everybody is connected in that yeah. Ohio group. Oh, yeah. And, of course, OH. I hope. <laughs> I hope. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> dude, I was born, <laughs> raised, bleed scarlet and gray. And it was just, it really did me proud. But I'll be honest with you guys. I'm like, man, do these guys. Hello. Oh. Do these guys know what they're getting into? Because you got Jesse Millsaps, Will Flesher, Robbie Frazier, Keith Carr. You know what I mean? Like, It don't matter. And, dude, I've been super proud to be an Ohio boy. And you guys come in and do really well. Like, yeah, not not I, just yeah, yeah. not just like uh you know they're holding their own like yeah dude you follow I'm like hell yeah. Yeah. it was cool absolutely man yeah, so, so, Reno. Nick, Nick and Joe did really good uh, Randy Cooper's doing great yeah, I Randy's think a good. lot of the how guys you know uh, I think once once we start as any with any fisherman I'm not going to say I would but, yeah you know. Unfor- we 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 joined a lot of high guys did so we could get the bigger water. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's so <laughs> true. Right. Oh Ohio. my gosh, our biggest lake is <laughs> eight miles long. I'm gonna make a prediction right now. I'm gonna make a prediction right now. And he's not here, and I haven't even talked to him. Oh, but I think it's his time to shine. And I'm gonna say 
big fish of the tournament. Oh, I know who you're going to say. Dale Prinky. <laughs> Dale Prinky. <laughs> yes. Dale. I really think. Dale, you better I, be watching this. I've talked to that guy a lot over the years. Makes a, we've known each other uh, for a while a, now. Yeah. He's a great guy. And I think that you he is a here. true. We will. He's oh, yeah, a true sure. angler. He's ate up with fishing. Yeah. He can catch him. He, can. I, he, he can. can. He is a really, really good angler. He had a small issue at, bless his heart, at you follow. He had yeah. a small issue not being able. He wasn't familiar with spotted bass. Yeah. <laughs> so he was actually catching legal spotted bass and throwing them back because it's a 12-inch spot and a 14-inch largemouth limit. So he, he threw a limit away one day, and but it, it was a learning. valuable lesson It was a learned. very valuable oh, yeah. learning experience. Yeah. I, I think, think that's a beautiful. Think, the good thing here, man, is us, I think a lot of us in this circuit are learning this. Yeah, year. absolutely. Yeah, yep. yeah. So that that's the that's the fun part. Watching this place grow up a little bit, you know. Yeah. Watching this and circuit, anglers grow, man. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm I'm still growing. I, I'm in it every oh, yeah. day, and I, you know. Hey, I, it's it's all different. To I told you, I was like, hey, man, everybody wants a camera to it's in your face. Yeah, yeah right. Right. It's a different ball game. With I the, loved it actually. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but it but it is different. I, I, it does influence. Wait a minute. So did you? When I was singing Bubble Guppies, was that bad or? <laughs> bro, you, I, I love it's the funny part this guy's like hey did you see this i'm like bro if you if you seen what i did during the day you would not ask uh, that yeah, question you, would, you yeah. know what i mean it's it's you, funny so you didn't watch the replay no hey, has anybody asked any questions oh no. yeah any, nobody's nobody, asked any nobody questions i haven't been watching i uh, appreciate it uh, sorry. We get to, whoever asks the best question gets a hat we do have some questions we'll go back through the live feed right, cool. and pick the questions i apologize right. that's all no right. problem yes, I, I, right. yes. yeah i like answering questions yeah. I think it keeps the conversation. It does, going. yeah, because I'm tired of talking to y'all <laughs> so, already. So since we don't have one, I'm going to throw one, and then, right, and then we'll wrap this all up. Right, so, right. I was just kidding about being tired. If you, I'm not, really. I'm not tired either. I, I can talk all night. <laughs> After this tournament. We can tell. Right? <laughs> the most important thing I'm going to do in this tournament is. The mo the, the mo fi fill in the blank. The most important thing I will do in this tournament will be what? Uh, stay in the top 25 for points. Well, I mean, I was thinking more like something you have to do. Landing fish? Like, oh, I have to okay. keep. Uh, no, I, no, no. You said after. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, during this tournament, during, you okay. have to do. I need to stay clean. I need to stay clean. These fish are big and strong. And as stupid as that sounds, it's true. Because that's what cost me a Patman. I, I didn't stay Bro, clean. Are you in 99.999% no. of the field? Like, Le uh, uh, no, I, every guy but says it's true. that. But that it's, was a unique term. Yeah, but it's it simple. Was, it, was, it was a fish loss term. Here's yeah, the thing: it was a as fish simple loss as term. that is, the one who's going to hook that big eight pounder plus and runs them through that Kissimmee grass and lands it. And there's a technique to that, right? That's not just. Yeah, oh, yeah there's a way. I don't, I don't. I don't know, Brad. To tell you. I, I mean, I broke one yesterday in Kissimmee grass, twenty pounds, and I, I have no idea if it was a bass because it just. And I hooked it, and it was. I mean, she just, just, yeah. just wrapped me up in that. We saw, we saw a dude today, and we were rolling down, and I saw a guy on the shoreline, and he was battling one on the main lake side. He was on the shore, but we could see. I saw water splashing. I'm like, stop, stop! This. I thought it was one of our guys, yeah, because he had a a shield on his windshield, you know. Oh so, yeah. So I had Tanner get the camera out, whatnot. We look, and this water going. At, it was a big old bowfin. Yeah. And it yeah, wasn't yeah, one of our guys, yeah. but it was there right there. So many mud grass. fish. That's it. <clears throat> That's it. Fish clean is probably the key. It's yeah. as simple as it is, but it, as strong as this grass is and as strong as those oh, big that, fish that can be. I mean, tough. even some of the fish that I've not tried to hook, right? Just, oh, uh, there's one. And you, guys practicing don't want to set the hook, so they just pull. Dude, if you let one pull on you and it gets yeah, it's 20 nature. yards away and, and you weren't paying attention or you're like, why is my line going? Oh, there he is. Like, it's already yeah. so far away. Yeah. The guy that doesn't mess that up, as stupid as that is. Do you think how much of that, though, like at Patman, like fish losing fish at Patman was just – it was part of the game. Dude, those trees were made out of something that every house should be built uh, yeah. out of. That's, that was, Seriously. That was the like trees, ironwood. No, 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 no. Yeah, it was like those trees were made out of not So trees. you guys, I wish, like, you guys don't get to, but we here, right? Oh, my gosh. Where you're, you guys are in your groups and, you know, but it's funny, like, man. If I just wouldn't have lost, if I just wouldn't have lost. Yeah. And guess what? Well, I, mine was even dumber. I didn't lose one in a tree. I lost mine in open water on a frog next uh, to a tree. It wasn't me. in a tree. I lost everyone nope. in the tree. Yeah. It was wait till, crazy. Wait till my I, I didn't put any <laughs> YouTube videos out because I just moved, so I've been so far behind. I got footage. I was so sick to my stomach of that last day, and I lost this stupid fish on a frog. It's the only frog. I caught every fish flipping. Every wow. fish except that one. I had three bites on the third day. At 3 o'clock, I'd be back at 4, I had three fish. And wow. I'm like, I'm going back to where I caught my last big one the day before. I go in there, 
freaking pick this frog up. Why? I don't know. Throw it next to this little tree. Why? I, it looked good. I would say another thing, Brad, is uh, fish care. Yeah. It's going to be tough we talked this about heat, that, man. I agree. That's yeah. been one of my biggest yeah, concerns true. coming into this. I don't know any yeah. much about I think about that's going to be one water. of the biggest hurdles. Like me personally, yeah. you're talking about water temp, we're almost reaching 90. We said, some of the guys said hit 90 degree water the other day. Yeah. So yeah. That, that does worry me a little bit. Well, and, and, and I will say this, and, and, and Holman and, 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 me, and, but it's and a, Luke talked about it today, man. Like, it's different. Like, these fish live in this water. This is I was going to agree with you because they're ready for night. I fished on uh, uh, Darnell but, one year, 90 degrees in August. There was, like, dude, no dead fish. Yeah, it, I, I don't know. We fished a tournament here a couple years back. It was a it was an August tournament. Half, half of the bags died. Yeah, so I mean, it was it was I, pretty. So we rough. actually had, you we put in eight rough. pounders too. That's going to be rough because there's not rough. enough room in those wells. It's for uh, it's oxygen in that. I normally water. I, I catch my wait to catch my big fish before I go in. That's how I do it. I would suggest yeah. you guys do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, take a white towel, wet it down, put it over your live well lids. Yeah. It'll help. It well, will and there's help there's oh, that's a good tip. Yeah, there's yeah, yeah, it'll help. we're gonna talk. So I talked to FWC. Like we we're, we're gonna have we're gonna talk about this at the meeting on Wednesday. You know, knowing and understanding. First of all, because if you get a dead fish, that is huge. Not only that, but do not dump ice on your fish. No, to shock them. It's Just too don't, cold. Don't do they're it. coming out of 90 degree water. You don't want to drop it to 70. That's so, yeah, but then you talk to somebody else. They're like, hey, man, just add a handful. Little, little of ice. ice. Okay. No ice. Yeah, yeah not a whole yeah, bag. Yeah, no, 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 How no, do you no, feel no. with the dead fish penalty? That seems like more motivation than anything. It's valid, man. It's a part of the game. It's part of the game. It's hard to control something. Well, yeah, but, like, that's also more motivation, though, to well, make no, sure. No fisherman wants to kill a bass. No, I guarantee story. <laughs> Like Not any fish. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Twelve inches. I mean, you don't want them to yeah. die. Yep. You know, we we I, I our our goal with that, and we we we've all talked about this at nauseum. You know, and for the viewers that don't know, if you if a, if you bring a dead fish to the scale, it's a one pound penalty, yeah. right? So when you talk about preserving the life and preserving the resource, I want guys. And, and, and the reason for the one pound is I want you equally worried about keeping that four pounder alive, the three pounder alive, yeah. as you do about catching the next five. Oh, I agree. So I want you back there in the live well nursing and, and going, hey, man, this fish, the, his best chance is for me to turn him loose while he's, while he's alive where he can go back to his comfort zone and take the stress off of him. Yeah. And we really feel like that was the catalyst for the one pound penalty. But I will tell you, as far as ice goes, never never have a delta. So I will tell you, in my live wells in my boat, I'm not fishing the MPFL. I have thermostats, yeah. remote probes, right? I never want to go more than five degrees colder than the surface temp or the ambient, the, the water temp of where I'm catching those fish, yeah. 12 feet or on the surface. You know what I mean? So never more than five degrees. You get in a shock. But guys can understand that your ability to keep a fish alive is because of dissolvable oxygen within the water. The fish has to have the ability. The water has to hold oxygen. So the hotter the water, the less oxygen it holds. You have to cool water off in order for it to hold oxygen. Mm -hmm. If you don't, it just off gases right out. So we're going to talk about a lot of that. FWC is going to be at our meeting on Friday or Wednesday, tomorrow. That's fantastic. And, and, yeah, that's and, and we are taking a very, your fish will never leave their live wells. You know, there's no bagging. There's no stress on the fish. You know what I mean? And they were very excited when we sat down and mapped out how we do our weigh-ins. Uh, they feel like that is going to increase survivability. They're out of good water for a very short amount of time. So how far guys, are we from the launch? So, I didn't even look. So it's not far from where we're going to weigh in yeah, at. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's 684 feet. Nice. 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 I, yeah. I, just, I wheeled it today. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> Did so, you wheeled it? Absolutely. Yeah, we carry a wheel. Like, I want to know how many boats, and I'm going to tell you guys, and the crowd will see that it may take a little longer for us to weigh in, but yeah. I would rather no, have I would rather no, have you in that's the great. water pumping fresh water yeah. than sitting on the hot asphalt. So, yeah, because you figure those fish have been in that water since in your well potentially since 8 o'clock in the morning, yeah. 7 o'clock so, in the morning. They're and where's the weigh-in going to be at? So where? Yeah, let's yeah, tell the so, people Yeah, home. man, so we're going to be waiting in 3 o'clock, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, at Venetian's Garden. So the ski beach side, you come out to the point. We've got it roped off. It's going to be awesome. A few vendors. We're going to be playing music. It's going to be great. The boats and the trucks will be coming right down your left side. They'll turn in front of you, jump off the stage, throw the fish up. It'll be great. Our weigh-in trailer is literally three feet from the steps. So you pick your fish out of your bag. You take <laughs> them down. They're in oxygen mass matched uh water so we match the water they pull it from the lake they come in they cool it off they add some additives to it 
So the fish go right into a very soothing bath. Tim. Nice. It's Tim, right? It's Tim, yeah. Can I go in that bath? Man. <laughs> right after the water. <laughs> hey, but if you guys are around Leesburg, Florida, you guys want to come to the weigh-in Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. When the guys come up, the fishermen come up in their boats, they'll have trinkets to be thrown out to the kids. If you guys are out there in the audience, we're going to be throwing stuff to the kids. It's very family-friendly. We want you to come out and enjoy things. And right there where we're at, there is some shade trees around us. Yeah, bring but your again, tents, pop them up. There, we, we, we put this we in the room. deal where there's plenty of room for you guys to relax, get some shade, and enjoy the weigh-in. Enjoy being out there Listen, around the people. If you come there, you can come there early. The weigh-in starts at 3 each day, but you can come. There's a splash park. There's walking trails. Like you say, there's a ski beach. There's plenty of stuff there to do if you want to come early and hang out until the weigh-in starts or if you want to hang out afterwards. Yeah, we'll have music. It's really a nice place. Yeah, we'll have music rocking all day at the weigh-in trailer. Uh, there, it's a popular place. We want to set the stage for you guys to bring some big giant bags of fish to the scales. And I think it's going to be a really cool event that the city of Leesburg and the Lake County Chamber is going to be very, very happy that, that, that we were able to get here and, and do all this stuff. So we're super excited about it. should Absolutely. be awesome. Yeah. I'm excited about this ending this because he's here comes the boom. still rubbing my leg. <laughs> Can't wait to hear hey, it, man. Yeah. Tell the first fingers. Say hi to whoever you want to say hi to and tell them where they can follow you. Hi to everyone. No. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm just He's kidding. Dan, get him. Drop him. <laughs> Drop him right now. All right, now. Dan, you go first. No, I'm kidding. No, I obviously you guys can find me on Facebook. You guys can find me on Instagram. Where at? Um, How? Joe What's... Discerny. That's who I am, and that's where I'm at. So, I mean, every, oh, every social outlet. That's who I am, and that's where I'm at. Dude, you got to make a T-shirt about that. <laughs> put my face on it? Yeah. JDF? <laughs> no, don't where... put your face on it. Just, <laughs> just the JDF? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so, no that's who I am, and that's where I'm at. You want to say hi to anybody? <laughs> Honestly, the family. I mean, everybody that's, uh, that's been supporting me, that's pretty cool. And I uh, appreciate you for letting me come and do this. So my wife kid will be here this week, actually. Awesome. I'm super excited about that. It's good, man. That's good stuff. I'm, I get jealous of Greg Mansfield because he travels with his whole family, and yeah. I don't. So they get to be here this week. Dude, I'm I passed excited. him on when we were leaving Texarkana. He was driving. I think he was driving the bus. She was pulling the truck in the boat. Yeah. It was pretty cool. <laughs> How about it, man? Dan, tell, talk to somebody at home, man, or tell them where to follow you and that good stuff. Uh, just to my family, my partners. Thanks a lot for everything, and you guys as well. Appreciate right on, it. You man. can Appreciate always it find them in the store, by the hey, way. Hey, remember, yeah, FishermanCentral.com, guys. It's top notch. Go check it out. Get back at us. But that's what you want to do. And remember, TNPFL.com for that 21 hours of live coverage with Luke Duncan. David Dudley's fill-in, Bradley Hallman, and your boy, Fat Cat Newton, and also on the National Professional Fishing League YouTube channel. We'll be streaming live there as well. Can't wait to see you guys and bring you all that 21 hours of live coverage here in Leesburg, Florida, for the third stop of the National Professional